and that moment comes quick, so I want it to be a boom, boom, here it but, is. But that's, that's preparedness. That's yeah. not method acting. That's yeah, just that's a smart actor. Yeah, I mean, if you had a, 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 a host of slaves downstairs, that would be method acting. Yeah. If, if you were whipping us uh, in the... Yes. No. Um, <laughs> Don't go would it help you to have a groupie downstairs? Because I'll come hang out in your dressing room. No, nah, he's got Jonathan and I in the With, dressing without, room. Okay. Without giving too much of, of who he is on stage, uh, if he were downstairs doing an eight ball, that would be too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm the magic eight ball. Yeah, all right. Mm. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> is it? Are we like challenging each other tonight? Because after every silly thing, everyone just goes dead silence. Perhaps we are. I don't know. Well, let's take a break. We'll be back. It's curtain call with Eric Ball. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, break time. That's who I wanted to ask you about. How did you get? He's a genius. Though. Sorry? That's, how, I, that's who I wanted to ask you about, Kate Weatherhead. Kate Weatherhead. She was at the theater at the conference. Oh She's wonderful. Gosh. Let's, let's so see incredible. the growth so far, Karen. Let's see. No, no, it's been two days. We're talking to her. This is the email, yeah. Oh, man. Skim the first part fast and get to the last half. It's, that's where all the juicy stuff is. That's the thing I don't get. You should be able to see the logo and kind of see what you know, what's in store already. And some people are just completely oblivious to it. And those are always the first Oh, I've been grabbing my crotch every night. Um, I know. I haven't served anybody. I took you now, but I keep forgetting. All right. All right. So during the rehearsal process for me, I know that I have completely embodied my character when I know what kind of underwear they're wearing. Um, can I, can I, can I buy a copy of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, the Donny Osmond version on DVD or VHS, and mail it to this guy? Oh, yeah, Okay, well, because he's like, I've been waiting for 12 years for Joseph. Oh, yeah, I know. Just go buy the damn DVD if you want to, to see the traditional... Uh, so you know, some balls like, okay, to send that to like, Ticket sales will reflect our patrons' experience oh, yeah. expectations. I'm furry. And so far, so I, don't need to. I know. You're doing so better than, uh, like, okay, I know. I've got this. <laughs> His intent was to make somebody feel like, and that's the oldest board member on the force. That's what you're dealing with. Like, he truly wrote a letter trying to make someone upset. It's just uncalled. You got better things to deal with. Many mean people. That's the real thing. Mean people suck. Mean people Here we go. Suck. Let's go. On that note. <laughs> I think he's in for a little bit of a shock. <sighs> you having fun with that? Yeah. She's like doing all these wild, crazy camera <laughs> angles, like, ooh, I'm flying in. And yeah, very nice. Like fly by. Oh, Welcome. fly by. <laughs> <He's Whoa. laughs> oh my gosh. Glenn has the camera and he's going Whoa. crazy. Welcome back to Curtain Call. This is Eric Ball, and Whoa. we are talking with uh, uh, Jonathan Twala, Terrence Williams, and Jamie Woodard from the uh, musical Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat out at Super Summer Theater. It uh, runs this weekend, Wednesday through Saturday, and the following weekend, Wednesday through Saturday. If you haven't seen it yet, it is a great rock concert, classic rock concert version of the uh, traditional tale of Joseph and his brothers, a uh, biblical tale by Andrew Lloyd Webber. Very, very fun musical. Um, you can get your tickets at supersummertheater.org or you can go to showticksforyou.com. $12 in advance, $20 at the door. Um, I go out and see. It's lots of fun. Uh, yeah. Glenn and I are both in it. It's it's just a it's a great ride and a great time to bring your family and, out. And, and we, we were talking during the break uh, it's not the traditional version, uh, which obviously when you say rock concert, right. uh, it, it's not. And, and uh, it, it I, I don't know how to express, um, 
you know, uh, some thoughts on things because uh, the review was not. Uh, it, Anthony Devalier, you know, uh, had his review out in the RJ, and I, I respect his opinion on things. Yep. Um, he's not where he is um, without there being some sort of uh, process to, to his reviews, and I and I, sub I I submit to you know uh, to any review, but make up your own mind on things. Um, this will not be everybody's show, uh, and, and you know, and that's something that you know Terrence has even talked about. It's like, yeah, it probably won't appeal to. Somebody that uh, saw the show when they were 50 years old in 1970 or mm. 71 when it first came out. Um, and everybody but, has an op opportunity to voice their opinion. But, um, you're your own critic. Yeah, so. but, but what I, but, and then something we talked about is that uh, any show that is worth its weight makes you think. A and this show does that. Um, it, regardless of the style of music, you know, if loud music's not your thing, sit farther towards the back of the meadow. You'll still be able to hear everything. But if loud music is your thing, oh yeah, get up get front. Your butt up. Yeah, yes. and, and 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 I'll be on and I'll be honest. You know, this really is going to cater more towards the eighteen to thirty-five year olds. Um, and, and that's not to say my parent my parents would love to see it uh, simply because their granddaughter is in it and, and their son is in it. Um, and my my dad would have a fun time. He'd have to turn his hearing aids. But now down, I have but. a question: as an audience member who's gonna go again, and I'm gonna do it much like I did because it's that exciting. Is it rude for me to to scream when I feel no. like screaming at a rock? It's concert? a rock concert, but it's also a theater. I know, but it's a great it's a great piece for people who don't see a lot of theater. Uh -huh. um, because if you've ever been to a rock concert, you know how to behave there. That behavior's okay here. Okay. So, okay, yeah. excellent. In fact, I plan on crowd surfing on the next uh, show. I'm, I'm going to give it a go. We already I, have a crowd surfing goat. We, we, <laughs> this is true. Who I didn't even recognize was my little Scotty O'Brien. Yeah. He changes yeah. so much every time I he see him. He grew horns. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Look like Mr. Tumnus. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yes. Mr. Tumnus. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, but you got to go out and see it. Here's the thing. I was, uh, I said earlier that I was um, surprised because I was concerned that maybe the older demographic of traditional Super Summer patrons would not stick around after they heard the yeah. first chords. And I was surprised to see how many stuck around and really seemed to enjoy it. But, so, but, but odds are they probably saw it ten years ago or, or however yeah. long. And, they, and, and it's been done at the ranch four times maybe in the last... 40 years, 37 years, three times, three times. Three so, times in the last Jamie's life. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, some of these patrons that may may have seen it 12 years ago, do they really want to see the same exact show? If they I, do, I don't all, know. if they do, all the better for them. But this isn't that, so yeah. it's okay. Yeah, and and that's that's the the cool thing about theaters that keeping. Uh, I, I, I hope people go to a show and, and sit at the edge of the or in the edge of the grass in this case. Sit, you know, wanting to know what's going to happen next. This is certainly one of those shows that even if you're familiar with it, you can't wait to see what's going to happen next because you have no idea how yeah. they're going to do it. Yeah. And that's it's like a magic show. You have no idea what's going to happen. You know, gonna yeah, you know the rabbit's going to come out. You know the rabbit's going to come out of the hat. You just yes. don't know what color rabbit it's going to be. Well, exactly. I'm familiar with Joseph. I know what scenes are coming next. I know. Oh yeah, that song's coming up next. Oh my gosh, what are they going to do with it? And I was not disappointed. It kept with cool. the flow the whole time. Cool. Yeah, and, and, and uh, the, the the argument that the music styles, because uh, that was something Anthony, you know, he said, oh the music's not there. Andrew Lloyd Webber specifically did the music for specifics. The styles are still there. They're just yep. modernized. Yep. Um, it's not your twangy country sound. For but it's a rock country ballad. Yeah, and and, and you instead know, of a reggae, it's a ska. Yeah, it's, you a, it's a rock ska. ska. It's no, I'll tell you though. Okay, okay. The I don't know the name of it, but the oh no. Yeah, that's, 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 that's Calypso. Calypso. Yeah. Calypso. Yes, that was, that was so great. fun, and, and you have the Mohawk guy singing it, and he goes for it. His body's moving in with Gerard, it. Gerard, he does a great totally job. Calypso. You're funny in that song. You're really funny in that You're song. Yeah. That, that is one of my favorite numbers. That's why it, like, just because she changes expression, she goes boo boo doo doo doo. Oh, you know, she's like, <laughs> she changes her face when she. It's really funny. It's right. You got to see it. But your your character is like a grizzled roadie. And so for the grizzled Brody to have such a cartoon face is really funny. <laughs> it's the stash. It's the <laughs> stash. No, I, that to me is a very climactic point in the whole show, as it should be, but for me personally, I have to give it everything I have left by that point in the show. And when we're at the end of that number, every, uh, every moment, I'll just say, every moment in that number is completely real. We're out of breath. We are. We, we, go, we, we go down for the final <laughs> bow, and we're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they have to turn our mics off immediately. But yeah, no, I, I love that number. I think it's great. 
It's I a think great Rod number. does a great job. Mm-hmm. What's, your, also, what's your favorite moment of the show, Dylan? Oh, gosh. I know. And here's that, the thing. I'm, I'm not trying to put any... Um, yes, I am. <laughs> I am trying to pigeonhole you a little bit, but I, I so do, hard to narrow it down I, because there are just so there's a, so many. There's a lot of fun moments, but but uh, personally, there's always moments of the show, especially when you're on stage as long as you are. <laughs> there's got to be times where you're like, "Gosh, I'm looking forward to this moment because I like this moment in the show." And this one is so hard. Oh my gosh, I love it, but it's hard. You know, what's your favorite moment of the show? Well, okay, audience. Uh, honestly, the the moments that get the most audience reaction are my favorite. Yeah. Uh, the first one definitely when the code comes out. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's oh. a big oh, reaction. Everybody just just Goes crazy. dies. Well, it's so cool because point. you see the code, and I actually said like I turned. I was like, "That's it." <laughs> but then, but Boom. then, I, I don't want to spoil and it and for anybody. Like, but yeah. it's just, oh, I already oh, did. I spoiled it. You must not have been listening. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> but no, that part I, I look, I definitely look forward to. And then the part at the very end mm-hmm. when I ride out my little, yes! um, that little um, golden chariot. Yes, golden, golden chariot. chariot. Let's call, it, let's call it that. Um, yeah, people are. I. It's one of those moments where you're just like, what are they going to do with this particular moment? And then. Boom! It's yeah. it's it's huge. Mm-hmm. It's huge. You're like, of course, that's the golden chariot. Oh, it of makes so much sense. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you descend from the heavens in a it's UFO. Silence. Thank you. <laughs> what, what about you, Terrence? Uh, Terrence? Uh, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. kind of can, having this um, concept from the very very beginning and and seeing the set designs and and kind of watching it progress and and. Maybe, uh, you know, the few challenges that come with putting up a show in general, you know, having to endure those. And then now that we're past our first week, what, what would you say has been the greatest uh, achievement in this, in this process so far? Um, I mean, just so much coming together. I mean, a lot of different effects, not just the coat, but other, like, Canaan Days has an effect. I mean, there mm-hmm. are several different songs that have effects that each one was technically challenging. And seeing them all come together in time for an audience was great. Nice. You know, in terms of the show... I have to be honest, the opening's still my favorite. Just the, the energy from transitioning from Jen to having the entire cast surprise the mm-hmm. audience and then having the brothers making their entrances. Which is huge. And when I talked to Steve Pallady, the scenic designer, like we were working on ideas and I already knew way back when mm-hmm. I want to find this moment that I can sneak the entire cast on stage and just have them shoot out of nowhere. And he's like, well, where would you do that? And I'm like, well, what if we move this piece here and we could do that? And then... And that's where the set came from, was cool. all these conversations of thing, visuals that I wanted to see Yeah, yeah. really defined what the set became. That's kind of um, cool. And same thing with the brothers coming out. That's where those upstage yeah. ramps came from, was that I needed some way to get people vertical in the background. So um, so just a lot of the seeing the planning come to life. You know, that's cool. What we ended up is just great. It started as a cannon. <laughs> but there was, and then there, just there almost was a trampoline, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> the, there were almost oh, yeah, there were right. almost four trampolines. We, oh, wow. we experimented; that it didn't go quite as I wanted. It could have probably worked out, but in the end, it was just it wasn't worth how much work would be involved mm-hmm. in that. So the brothers were almost really airborne. Whoa! Kids, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a, it's it's. How about you, Jamie? What's your what's your um, now that we, we're past that first week of shows? It always there's always some sort of I don't want to say collective exhale after getting past that first week as you look forward to doing the next week. There's more of a um, kind of a mindset of, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. It's like jumping out of a plane first time. Mm-hmm. When you do that second jump, you're not, you don't have as much, you're looking forward to the fun of how, jumping. How many planes have you jumped out of, Eric? It was an analogy. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I'd actually say the thing that hypes me up the most um, and gets me sort of excited is the pre-show. Because I know that that puts me in the right frame of mind to actually rock out during this <laughs> massive concert that is Joseph. And um, it gets my adrenaline running, and I don't know how I would get it that yeah. pumped up without that pre-show. Because we, we get the audience involved. It's totally, for me, it's totally about the audience. So every time that there's uh, laughter or cheering or the clapping along or where we can get to interact with them, mm-hmm. uh-huh. those are the moments that I just think are so oh, yeah. amazing. So your your moments that uh, Eric has during his Pharaoh moments, uh, I'm fun. backstage. I don't even get to see them, but I hear them, and they're just phenomenal. I love those moments. Um, I yeah, love Calypso too because yeah. the the energy is the energy is always extending into the audience. But that at that point where I am giving it all I got, I feel like the audience is giving it all they got too. That they're right there with you. So um, I don't know. I, I don't know if that even answers the question. But it does. Definitely. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, and the pre-show <laughs> really pumps up the audience, too. The song that you sang was oh. particularly delightful because Jason <coughs> O'Brien came bounding through the meadow like a gazelle in the Serengeti to sing with Terrence. Oh, yeah, but he... <laughs> <laughs> I love the Serengeti. Yes. yes, but seriously, like, he leapt and was flying through the meadow and just... Oh my gosh, this is happening. I got out my camera. No, I didn't. I had no idea loud, who it was. It was just some guy oh, wow. kind of singing. Faith student, so. Faith yes. graduate. And he sang it, and then you handed him a broom, and I was like, Harry Potter, what is he going to do? And he air guitared that broom. He knew exactly what to do he with that did. broom. He, was like, he knew it was my, here's my axe. I <laughs> totally <laughs> missed it. Oh man, I have yeah. it on. T well, I, I can't post it on Facebook, though, because my commentary of, this is really effing happening. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you could. You could just bleep it out. <laughs> well, cool. How about you, Glenn? What's your favorite? Uh, <laughs> so, thanks, Terrence. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, this this is a unique experience. Uh, this show, uh, and and uh, I've thanked Terrence a couple of times, and I'll do it publicly as well. Um, uh, my daughter is in the show with me, so nice. the whole thing, the whole every rehearsal, mm -hmm. it's just been a huge bonding experience for the two of us. Um, it, and you know we're doing a little pre-show thing too, and that's Ten. cool. Um, you weren't there uh, for that. Uh, Not opening night, but I was. No, there. opening night was a, a total uh, fiasco. So I'm hoping uh, you no, didn't record that one. No, I was. No, I didn't get that one. I, I saw she one was the second night. Libby sang though. Oh, okay, that was second night. Then. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Opening night was uh, kind of a debacle uh, for me, uh, and I've you know I got back on the horse and. Uh, uh, Whatever. Uh, <laughs> there is no horse. There is no horse. There is only Zool. Um, so, f for me, uh, it kind of culminates uh, when uh, we get the buckets, or when we get uh, when Fer or Joseph gives us the food. I I, I started giving my daughter a high five, you know, because she's the one that gives me the food, and I'm just oh, like, that's cool. We're doing this. This yeah. is, uh, and, and so. Um, uh, that's uh, it's just a uh, personal journey for everyone, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you don't you don't have if you don't have kids that you don't quite understand it, but uh, yeah. you get to work with your wife, uh, yeah. and and that's there's 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 that wow yeah uh, aspect cool. of things, um, and so for me, uh, it's just every every moment, um, you know, yeah. I, I, it's where it's less father daughter yeah yeah. More colleague, and we're both doing this, and and it's not like one of you was a like a favor for the other, like oh you're I, in the show, let me do you a favor and cast you. No, I I, 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 I had to both belong in the show. You both have a place in the show. And I, and, and, and 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 uh, I truly believe that I would never have asked the favor. Um, and, and I submitted a video uh, for her audition. Um, and, uh, a lot more of that. Creep, right creep. Nowadays. <laughs> video. That, that video needs to make it online. Uh, I, I, Glenn did the smartest thing. <laughs> she was super nervous when she auditioned. She sang a song. I don't remember what she sang, but she sang a song. My my immortal maybe. That, some evanescence. That sounds about yeah. right. She's <laughs> super nervous, and it wasn't maybe the best. Uh -huh. And when she finished, he kept the camera rolling. Yeah. And she collapsed down to the floor, like face down, <laughs> completely flat on the floor. Like that was terrible. <laughs> like, but just like hearing how like. How much she wanted it, and that she knew that it wasn't quite where it needed to be, was helpful to me. I I, I, I sent I sent some of the natural because he, yeah. you don't always see. Um, you rarely see. Yeah, uh, you you see you see somebody come to an audition giving you what they think you want to see, and I've always learned that, uh, and at least in my experiences, that a director is going to shape the character once you're in the show. Mm -hmm. They want to see. Who you are, and they want to see that what you bring, what you're it, able to do, y that it's truthful, and that um, it, yeah, I, are, I, I don't want to give away my trade secrets, but you well, know, I'll, I'll, it's from a teaching perspective. There, there's um, there are certain demands a production has with regards to the demographic of the roles and the, the, the you know just the story in general, everything. And you need to fulfill those demands. I mean, the problem is, is, is not so much how you want to fulfill the demands. There are demands that need, if you, this character has to hit this note, you have to find somebody who can sing that. There, it's, it's a technical demand. Um, but he, here's the thing, and this, this is a little tip for you, all you students out there. Um, you know, don't necessarily go in trying to hit the bullseye of what you think the director is looking for. Instead, try to get into the director's head a little bit and try to see if you can approach the audition in the same energy and mindset 
but instead give them a very solid and very accurate depiction of what you can offer, what you can bring to the table. May, you, there's no way for you to ever determine what the project is going to demand in the big picture. And, and, because it's, and it's a bit pretentious of you to go in oh, there yeah. saying, here's what you want, director. Right. Uh, this, is, this is it. Right. This, this is what you because need. Because you may know, like for instance, let's say you're doing, I don't know, any musical, Sound of Music. And let's say you know it upside down and inside out. You don't know how the director's going to do that Sound of Music. So you can go in, it's kind of um, hard for you to try to hit the bullseye for technically what Sound of Music demands and getting into the head of the director. Instead, try to kind of have an idea of what you think they're going to want, and then go in instead and represent yourself. Yeah, but make, make a solid choice. Make and, a solid and, 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 represent and, and what make you it, can do. Make it as true as you possibly can make it. Because um, in the professional industry, there's going to be people... I, I remember having an agent in Chicago and going into an audition. I've told this story to your class, Colleen. Um, um, Hit the bell and, quick. Yeah. <laughs> and I got a call back for a, a watch commercial or a jewelry commercial or something. And I was very excited because I hadn't done commercials before. You know, and I was like, oh, got a call back. And I walked in the room and they said, no, no, no to all of us. And I, I didn't even say anything. I was too tall. The girl that had already been cast was in the room and I, we needed to match up with the girl. And before we even said a word, we were, we were cut. Sometimes there are demands that are beyond what you can understand. Um, and, and that's beyond what you are able to offer. So it's kind of like go in with everything that you are able to offer with a spirit of competitiveness and a spirit of I'm able to work for you with everything I have. Let me show that in this moment. And if you can show that, um, they're looking for a piece of clay that they mm -hmm. can mold. Are you going to be adaptable? Are you going to be workable? Are, are you going to be? Yes. You know, are you going to be fun as you as you do that? Are you going to add to the energy of the show demands? Are you, it, it's just there's so many different things, and and um, that's probably the biggest problem I have in my job as a high school theater director is that is that uh, oftentimes I get accused of, of casting the same people. Well. In the big picture, sometimes the same people get leads, yeah. But what are those leads doing? Are they doing something right in the process of auditioning? Are they yeah. going to voice lessons? Are they going to dance lessons? Are they working private study acting lessons? Are they Because they may be doing something that this other person is not. You need to kind of look at it in the approach, not in the end all be all, because I very much pride myself on the fact that it's cast based on the audition. Sure. And not all high schools do that. Um, and, 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 you know, they cast based on the demographic or the... or the fact that they have five people who audition and we got to work with what we got, you know. But uh, I'm very fortunate and we have a very big number of students that love theater at Faith Lutheran. And now, do, you, do you open up your auditions to any student at the high school? Yes. yes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, any student at the high school. Okay. And there's some people that fly under the radar very... <laughs> and that's the, usually the fun thing because who doesn't want an underdog to succeed? You know what I mean? I mean, I think it's part of our human nature to want to root for the underdog. Unless you're the top dog. Unless you're the top dog. Then you want to see him die. I have a very funny story for you. Fair Is it about one. Marvin Hamlet? No, but it's about oh. casting and, and doing what the director asks you. And I think you're absolutely right on. Like, a lot of times, you can never imagine what somebody has in mind. And sometimes you're being asked to do things not because it's what the director has in mind. They're just testing you, to right. be honest, you know? Mm. Um, I went to an equity audition for Avenue Q nice. before it started here. Um, my vocal selection got me a callback for Brian. Nice. <laughs> and I came back, and the, the callback for Brian was, uh, there's life outside your apartment. Mm -hmm. So I came back in, and I sang the song, and he goes, that was good, come back at two. Didn't say anything about why or what we'd be doing, just said, come back at two. I come back at two, there are four guys who are similar build, maybe mm -hmm. larger, maybe smaller. Mm -hmm. We are clearly all called back for the same role. And he says... Here's a box of donuts. I want you to sing the song while eating a donut. Hmm. And the first guy opened his mouth and said, but we wouldn't be doing that in the show, would we? And he said, you can leave. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and, and then three of us tried to sing a song while eating a donut. Wow. Would they really do that in the show? No. He was looking for who would, you know, would just take do it on it. and just try something crazy, yeah. you know, and... I love directors that tell you to drop the script in an audition. I oh, want to yeah. drop meet, the script. I want to do that, that scene guy. again. Drop, I'm, do the scene again. Well, I've, I've, I've had I've had that done to me. Drop the I script. Love, I love I love auditions. Uh, uh, but I I I want to meet the guy who. You just I, want a donut. No, I want <laughs> I want to know if he learned it, what he learned from that, and where what he's doing it because that's that's a heartbreaker right there. I mean, which one? The one who 
we wouldn't do that in the show. Even oh, yeah. If, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it, that wasn't you, right? No. Oh, okay. No. no. <laughs> I was up there. <laughs> it was like a, a really difficult experience to try to, because every actor is concerned with looking good or sounding good. Right. And here's a director who has set you up, who has said, you can't look good. Now what? Mm-hmm. Can you make well, this interesting Brian, to watch? Brian is kind of a, a comedic... Uh, well, and that's what and that's what it became, was how funny, like, could you make him laugh while doing this, yeah. is what I played it as, at least, was, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I eventually lost it to the guy to my right, who was easily twice my size, and, you know, he mm-hmm. was funny, if not funnier. And, you know, away it went. But mm-hmm. that was certainly... This, what was this wasn't the did. one that was at the win. This yeah. was, oh, yeah. it was at the win, yeah. okay. We should we should do a show on auditions, just auditions. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, just uh, J- Jamie, Jamie and I did a workshop together, which is where we met. Um, and uh, I, oh, five minutes. Oh, well, it's a, it's a very long and hysterical story, so yeah. I'll save it. Uh, but uh, we we did we a, definitely do that. Uh, yeah. a, 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 and anyone who's listening, uh, Rance uh, Wright, uh, who's uh, out of New York. Uh, he brought a number of casting agents, Broadway casting agents, into Las Vegas, and he does uh, workshops uh, throughout the United States. And this was something that uh, a friend of mine told me, you need to do this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't have the money. I, I found the money. Uh, and it was a, a very enlightening experience because uh, the directors, the casting directors, actually told us, this is what we look for. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I see a thousand people. Mm-hmm. I need... I need to only see one. If I can see that, if you're that first person, and, and you, I don't need to see 999 more. Um, they were very, they yeah. were just very insightful and, and very helpful. And that's what you don't think that you get out of an audition. You think that everybody behind the table is your enemy. Uh, thank you. Enter, enemy? Enemy. Yes, enemy. Um, but the, they were all so happy and willing to give us the keys and formulas to success because. Yeah. They're like, look, you're going to make my job easier. I won't have to see those other people. Yeah. I will be able to just know that you're the one who's going to be able to do it because not only are you you, mm-hmm. you're true to what the, the medium or whatever it is that you're trying to, to portray, the songs that you're trying to do, the acting, the piece, whatever. You're true to that, and you're somebody that I can confidently put in front of a director and say, okay, this is a moldable person. Does it match up with what you were thinking for the show? And then if you get cut after that, that's... The, that's At least life. they know. Yeah, yeah, that's life. That's the technical issues that you didn't match up. Yeah. But they are able, and they do the same things. They call back the same people a lot of the time because. And which is why you see some of the same people getting cast for, uh, you know, shows in New York and and, and movies and uh, well, television and. It's not a hard formula to f- to figure out as far as what you need to do in order to have a good audition. What's hard about auditioning is. The, the subjectivity <laughs> of the creative team and what they're wanting to fulfill within right. the story. And, and there's that there's and that huge fear factor of not knowing what that director may want, but it's not a, it's not necessarily knowing what you want. If right. I, if I were to audition for you again, Eric, um, I, I would go in um, a little bit more confident because I've worked with you before. Right. Same with Terrence. I have a little bit uh, easier feeling. Um, but I went in an audition yesterday not knowing the director at yeah. all. And... I was still confident enough to go in and go, this is what I have to offer. I'm going to be truthful in singing the song as I interpret it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if that f- follows with what you're looking for, great. If you have some direction. And, and I will say those things, too. Yeah. It's like, you know, would you like me to... I don't mind anymore uh, asking the questions. And, and, and I'll say, and I'll, I'll capitalize on that by saying, you know, and that's, that's why every audition is good for an actor is because it kind of strengthens you, gives you that experience, good, bad, or ugly. You walk away from it. I always say if you fall on your face, you're at least still moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, um, I'm going to say, let's wrap it up. Hope you catch us next week on Curtain Call with Eric Ball. It's on Sundays from 6 to 8 p.m. Every Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. I won't be here. You can, he, Glenn won't be here next week. You can check our archived shows on YouTube. Just search Curtain Call with Eric Ball. We have a whole uh, list of them. Links are, links are on the uh, Facebook page as well. They are. Uh, even, even though the world uh, does exist outside of Facebook. Um, there is life outside of Facebook. But please, <laughs> like us on Facebook as well.
well. Go out and check out Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat at Super Summer Theater. Check it out at supersummertheater.org. You can also check out Summer Camp the Musical at the Onyx Theater, onyxtheater.com. And uh, in the meantime, listen in to KSHP throughout the course of the week. They're going to have tickets to Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat Woo-hoo. that we're going to be they're going to be uh, auctioning off and giving away throughout the course of the week. Um, and we would love to see you out there as well. So we're going to probably sign off until next week. I'm going to say for Glenn Heath. For Carrie Ann Parks, for our producer, um, um, Chris Scott, guy. who's standing right behind me, <laughs> probably making a bad face at me right now because I blanked on his name for two seconds. Sorry, Chris, I love you. Um, and, and for Jonathan Twala, Terrence Williams, and Jamie Woodard, and intern Kelly, Woo-hoo! thank you for tuning into Curtain Call with Eric Ball. We will see you next week. <laughs> That's how we end it, right there. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> His face was classic, too. He got there and he was like... <laughs> I saw him reach for the back. I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> All right. Say goodbye, Say goodbye everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Sorry, Chris. Okay. What's wrong with me?